Hello everyone, it's Ronnie again. I hope that everybody is having a good week, a good start to the new year. It's Saturday and I'm learning that it is still 70 degrees in January here, which is nice and I don't think I want to go back to where it's cold in January. <laughs> Anyways, this is the first video since we got married. Matthew's actually home today. Since I'm filming this on a Saturday, um, I usually don't have to work Fridays. And so I usually film this on Friday, but I had to work yesterday. So here I am. Um, this video is going to be about New Year's resolutions, keeping your New Year's resolutions, and knowing the right kinds of approaches to New Year's resolutions. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> New Year's resolutions can be for health, they can be for education, <clears throat> they can be for pleasure, they could be for really anything. So um, here's some tips on how to keep your resolutions and how to make good ones. So yeah. Um, I made some New Year's resolutions. Uh, I want to um, read more um, and I'll dive into specifically that resolution more in depth um, later in this video, but <clears throat> sorry. Um, today I want to talk about this thing called SMART goals. Um, we learned a lot about this in our nutrition education. Over and over again, we would talk about SMART goals. And SMART goals are used in counseling and nutrition. They are used in making goals in nutrition specifically, but they can be used for goals in any day in any person's life. So here we go, more flashcards. So we have SMART goals. So S stands for specific, M stands for measurable, A stands for achievable or attainable, um, R stands for realistic, and T stands for timely. And this is a good acronym to remember. Um, we have to remember it, we get tested on it, so SMART goals, S-M-A-R-T. So I'm gonna, since this is primarily a nutrition and health and wellness kind of video vlog thing I'm doing, I want to specifically talk about health related goals. So I know that a lot of people in the new year, uh, they say they wanna lose weight. So here is a goal um, that a lot of people probably have. They want to lose 25 pounds or 50 pounds or 10 pounds or 100 pounds you know that's just their goal for weight loss this year of some kind <clears throat> and it's a fairly common and not bad goal you have specific numbers which is good it handles the specific part of the smart goals but the whole goal doesn't have a lot of thought put into it um, the way it's written. So we're gonna kind of take this goal of losing 25 pounds and which you can insert any health goal into this one. We're gonna take this one and kind of run with it and make it a smart goal. Okay, here we go. So first we have the specific part of smart <clears throat> and specific would be, you know, addressing the why, how, and you know what. So the 25 pounds is good. So why do you want to lose 25 pounds? Is it because your doctor told you to? Is it because you were, you know, when you were 25 pounds less heavy, you felt better? Whatever the reason is, you have to have a reason for it to be a goal that you can eventually achieve. 
So that's the what and the why and the how is, okay, I want to lose 25 pounds. How am I going to lose 25 pounds? That's kind of, you have to assign the how as well to attain the goal. Okay. And the next one is measurable. So a measurable goal is numeric. So like the 25 pounds, that's measurable. And it's not entirely specific to a time frame, but we'll get into that later. So you have your numeric measurable goal, 25 pounds, which is good. Next one is achievable or attainable. So you need to make sure your your goal can be achieved. So is it okay for you to lose 25 pounds? Can you physically lose 25 more pounds? If you're 100 pounds, don't lose 25 pounds. Like that's not, don't do that. That's not healthy. So you, it has to be achievable for you. And if you, you know, if you have struggled to lose weight your whole life, um, maybe 25 pounds is a little too much for you at first. Maybe you need to start with more achievable weight loss goals. And that brings us to the next one. Realistic. So you want to make sure your goals, you know, like achievability, they're realistic. Can you lose 25 pounds? Um, do you, is that realistic for you? Can I, like, have you struggled, like, again, with losing weight your whole life? And is 25 pounds realistic? So you've got to think about how realistic your goal is as well. And the last one is timely. So I like timely a lot because assigning a time to accomplish something makes it more real, makes it more solidified in your mind. So if you write down, I want to lose 25 pounds in six months, you have six months. And I don't like the six months. I think that time-wise, you shouldn't make goals for longer than three months just so you can have more gratification um, more quickly and not lose hope on your goal. So assigning a time to your goal, it will make it a smart goal as well. So I want to take our, I want to lose 25 pounds goal and I want to make it more into a smart goal for an everyday person who is, you know, making this New Year's resolution to lose weight. So the smart goal version of I want to lose 25 pounds is I will lose five pounds in two weeks, which is more realistic. It's measurable. It's time. It's a small increment of weight to lose. And I will do that by decreasing my soda intake and increasing my walking by 30 minutes five times a week. So by doing this, you put the how in there. Uh, you have the why in your mind. So you have the specific of what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. You have a time, the weight is measurable, the weight is realistic. And when you, when you hit that five pounds, you know, you'll just, if you, you know, keep saying to yourself, okay, I lose, uh, I lost five pounds in these two weeks. The you know, I'm going to lose five pounds in the next two weeks as well. And then you just keep doing that until you reach your goal of 25 pounds. And it will, you know, seem like it took less effort and it was more attainable because you made smaller decisions. Like when I said I wanted to read more this year, I wanted to read 12 books this year. I don't think I've read a book for just my own enjoyment since high school. So I wanted to read more books. So I told myself that I would read one book a month. And the way I would do that was by cutting out 20 minutes a day to read. And 
yeah, and then I'll hopefully eventually I will get there. And so the one book a month, 20 minutes a day, that's how I'm going to do it. Another, I want to say some like tips on how to, you know, keep on your New Year's resolutions. Um, you know, set yourself up for wins. And that's why the five pounds is a good start. Because if you say you want to lose 25 pounds and you don't lose the 25 pounds, then you get all discouraged. But if you set yourself up for five pounds and you lose that five pounds, you know, you set yourself up for a win and then you lose five more pounds and you lose five more pounds. And eventually you're going to lose the 25 pounds, but you had more wins and it was more of a enjoyable experience through the whole time you were losing weight through the whole pain, I guess, some people would say, and small changes. So, you know, the eating, the drinking less soda that was in our SMART goal, that is a small change. Walking 30 minutes extra a day for, you know, five days, that is a small change. And, you know, some people can't do that, and that's fine. Just make other small changes. You know, some people can spend five days a week in the gym. Some people can't. And so it's just the, the small changes to set yourself up for victories and wins. The next one is share your victories. Even if that's just writing them down, putting them on paper, sharing with your friends, sharing with your spouse, sharing with your mom, anything, just sharing your victories. Be like, I lost five pounds today. And that is good. Like, that's great. Write it down and you celebrate it. Celebrate your wins. And that goes along with write things down. Write down your goals, have them posted. So you look at them and remind yourself why you are working towards that goal. And then the last one is don't beat yourself up. This is something that causes a lot of people to, you know, jump off the bandwagon or fall off the wagon I don't really sorry don't know that analogy that well anyways if you beat yourself up you're less likely to you know get back on the horse and continue with your goal like if you accident if you gain two pounds one week because your body does that sometimes um, weight loss isn't just eating and exercise it's stress it's sleep it's a whole bunch of other things so if you gain two pounds in one week don't beat yourself up about it you know just keep working towards your goals and you will get to them if you work hard and you think smart okay anyways if anybody has any questions or anything about any of these SMART goals or ways to set SMART goals for yourself or any New Year's resolutions or you want to hear more about my New Year's resolutions, just leave me some comments. Okay. Have a great year, y'all.